So today our discussion will be on how to code RSI divergent signal in PineScript. I researched a lot in YouTube and Google and I couldn't find a single PineScript coding on RSI divergence and I realized why because the coding is pretty tricky. But I think once you go through the coding in this, uh, in this video, this will give you a massive step ahead in your coding skills in doing many things, not only the RSI divergence but also in um, stochastic divergence and also in on balance volume divergence as well. So this is given pretty beautiful uh, signals here. So by signal there which lets your consolidation right now this is pretty recent. Uh, it's a buy signal there which led to a minor consolidation but then it broke down. A really good buy signal here and here led to a massive reversal and also here led to a massive reversal there. Now the reason why I like to code this uh, indicator rather than visually see it uh, is because of the strict rules uh, it gives. So discretion trading we do have strict rules but it's really hard to implement those strict rules because the rules application can be quite vague. Say for instance here on the 28th of September the RSI is create a new low but then on the 1st of October again it's created a higher low and the price is also creating a new low. So there's an RSI divergence here but there's no indicator signal here and the reason why is I've created a minimum period in which I should find the RSI divergence. So my period was between 5 and 50 days and I given that strict rule that the RSI divergence should happen within that 50 period otherwise I don't want that signal and that has given me some beautiful signals which I believe for me suits but if you guys want to change you can change it and that's a beautiful thing about coding it makes whatever kind of trading that you do to be more strict and gives you better results so that you can apply it consistently. So at the end of the video I'll give you out a few challenges as well so that will also help you uh, give you a next step to your coding in PineScript. So I'll just go and explain to you the strategy uh, line by line so you guys get an idea on how it works. So uh, initially I just declare a few variables so the RSI period is 14 and then I've given certain values like maximum range and minimum range and pivot right and pivot left. I'll come into detail on what that is. So first we'll create an RSI indicator function, I mean RSI indicator. So basically this is the RSI indicator code. So I'll go it line by line. So thanks to PineScript, uh, they've got built-in functions for RSI which calculates the RSI for the close for the RSI period, which is 14 here. So that gives us the RSI value. And then I'm gonna plot that RSI value here. So I use the plot function, and then that gives me this black line here. But then I also need the dotted lines here, which describes the oversold and overbought condition. So I put in like a edge line, which is basically a horizontal line, and the style is dotted. Uh, so that gives you 70 and 30. So that gives us the overbought and oversold. And then I fill this overbought and oversold sign with the color dot fuchsia, which is the pink uh, line that you see. So then we need to declare a few things. So before that, I like to introduce to you certain things in PineScript, um, certain uh, manuals in PineScript, which is really, really good for you guys to uh, check out. So this, this is a PineScript user manual and there's also the PineScript language reference. So this kind of things gives you different functions and different variables and all their duties and the operator. So I'll give the links to both these pages in the description so you guys can have a check. So coming back to um, the code. So first we need to check if there's a new pivot low in the uh, RSI value. So i.e. do we have a new pivot? Uh, so basically we use the pivot low function. So pivot low function what it does is that it checks the RSI value which we calculated here and then checks from the left to the right that's five period and it gives out a value whether it's true or uh, if it's true it returns the value of that uh, low or if it's false it returns an NA. So the NA function checks whether the value is NA and returns a true value. So this question mark and this thing is ternary conditional operator. So basically what it does is it checks this expression and if this expression is true then it gives out false, else it gives out true. So this condition pivot low true basically checks whether there's a new pivot low for the RSI and it returns a true or a false function to the pivot low true. Um, we'll come to this function in a bit but then before that we need to um, 
understand how the RSI is basically calculated, RSI divergence. So it basically takes a range of a certain amount of days and see whether we have created a new low in the price and the RSI has created a new high. So in order for that, I'm creating a new function. So if you go to um, an example for people who don't know what a function is, uh, so declaring a function is pretty simple. So a function basically does is that it gives you a job to do. So it's like a brain, the lungs has a function to do, but for the lungs to function, the brain has to give a signal to tell the lungs, hey, breathe in and breathe out. That's basically the function of the lungs. So similarly, you can create a function, for instance, here, f of x comma y, and give a job for it, that's x plus y. Uh, this equal to and greater is how we decide that this is a function. So when you call b equals f of 2 comma 2 so this function will be called and it takes this 2 and this 2 and adds them both and returns that number to b so basically f of 2 comma 2 will be 2 plus 2 that equals 4 so now b is going to be 4 same thing can be done for the open and close so a equals f of open and close so what it does is that when you call f so open and close will be added and a will be given that value so this is a single line function. We also got multiple line function where we basically create multiple lines uh, for the job to do. So here we've created a multiple line function and be careful when you create multiple line function, there is um, a space to be made, a tab to be made. So what this is, what this function does is take that value, which could be the pivot low that we calculated before and then checks which bar did this happen. So that's where the bar since condition uh, can be used. So basically it counts the number of bars since the last time the condition was true. So it checks this x and it sees whether this x equals true. So uh, once that is calculated, it's stored into bars and this bars basically checks whether it's in the range that we have decided. So we've decided a range of 50 comma 5. So basically it will check whether this situation has happened between uh, 50 periods and 5 periods and if it's true then the confirmed range will be true and if it falls then confirmed range is false uh, so that's basically this function and this function we're using to check uh, both for the uh, higher low for the price I mean higher low for the uh, RSI and the lower low for the uh, price so for the RSI higher low we have uh, used this line here for the RSI higher low check so we actually check if the RSI value um, is higher than the RSI value which was checked before the lower low. So for that we use a value when function. So value when function is basically it checks this condition and it checks its occurrence and then it basically gives you the value and we check if the value is greater uh, for the RSI value and we also confirm the range for that uh, and that's again basically this uh, bars uh, since function here and we calculate the minimum range whether this has occurred in that between 50 and the five days So similarly we check if the price is having a lower low So this is different from the RSI RSI we are checking higher low, but this one we are doing a lower low So we use the a low which basically calculates a bars low and we check if the pivot right and again We use a value when and then we see this condition as well So now we've got the price lower low check and the RSI higher low check. So now we can confirm the bull condition. So for the bull condition, we need to confirm that the price is a lower low, which is this one, and the RSI is a higher low, and also the pivot low is also true. So once these three conditions are set, now we are ready to plot. So again, we use the ternary conditional operator here. So if the pivot low is true and the RSI value, uh, if pivot low is true, then return the RSI value pivot right, and then otherwise not applicable. So these are basically the... Um, line that we draw if you can if you can zoom it in you can see uh, we've drawn like a line here so that's basically what this plot does for you and then this plot again the same situation but we're using that by condition here so that's pretty much it with respect to coding um, I know this is really hard to digest in but if you can go step by step understand what the job of every single uh, line is it's pretty it's pretty decent it's it's um, it gives you really good solid understanding and if you want to change the range so here I've done five days as the pivot low pivot right and also maximum range is 50 days and five days you can play around with these values you can also change the RSI period from 14 to whatever um, now here's the challenge for you now the challenge for you is basically this um, instead of doing the buy signal 
why don't you try the sell side as well the codes are very similar except for minor changes here and there so um, I'll leave the codes anyway in the description for you guys to check out that's the number one challenge for you try to create a sell side as well and then the second thing is do this for the stochastic so for this we have done the RSI divergence now try doing this for a stochastic um, I'm pretty sure PineScript has got a stochastic built-in function as well and then I want you guys to do an on balance volume divergence as well because that'll be really good because that's kind of like a leading indicator because we're taking uh, volume into consideration so basically we're creating a price is lower um, low but then volume is creating a different divergence so that one as sell would be a third challenge and then the fourth challenge for you guys will be to back test the strategy so we've got the buy signal now create a strategy which exits uh, this uh, once you enter the trade for the buy when are you planning to exit your trade and back test over a substantial period of time and see whether the strategy works so I hope this really helps you in improving your coding skills in PineScript uh, feel free to ask me any questions in the comments or email um, hope you like it and have a great day